Hello everyone, my name is Mandy Dennis and I am an account manager here at Remind and I just wanted to take a few minutes today just to discuss some of our more popular search filters and our layers that you can use within your searches within Remind, especially for prospecting. So, um, you know, today's market is super crazy and everyone is just trying to find those listings everywhere they can. So hopefully um, this little tidbit of information will help you guys out, especially with your prospecting. So I'm gonna start out. I'm on the search option here under the properties toggle because that's usually where I would want to be if I'm doing prospecting. So the first thing I'm going to do, one of the most popular searches that were asked, how can you do this? How can I prospect a neighborhood? Is you can actually search for a neighborhood up here in this top search box. So I can type in a city, if there's a certain city I wanna prospect, a zip code, but subdivision is usually one of our number one popular search um, filters that agents would use along with, you can also do a school district search. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm going to type in this neighborhood, it's Orange River Hills, it's in Florida. So once I have typed in my subdivision, then I can scroll down here under neighborhoods and I can see if my neighborhood's listed here in the top three options. If it's not, I can always come here to see all results. And so then I could select my neighborhood from that larger list. So once I find my neighborhood, I would like to apply as a filter. I'm going to scroll over to the map and hit apply filter. This is gonna draw the boundary of the neighborhood on the map. So I can easily see if that's the area that I want to prospect in. So from here, some of the filters I can use, one of the next popular filters is to come here to hit add filter and to use the off market filter. Because off market filter basically is um, filtering out all those properties that's currently listed with an agent on the MLS. Um, you can filter out the properties that um, was closed off the MLS. So anything that was recently sold in the past six months time frame that may have been a for sale by owner, um, we can filter those out as well. So just concentrating on those properties that are truly off market. So I'm going to make that selection here. And so as you see, once I add these filters, then my results are gonna show here. So I've got 69 results in this particular neighborhood that is off market. So from here, this is where I can start using some of these popular filters over on the left-hand side of the map. Again, there's property value filter. This would be a perfect filter to use if it's a neighborhood that may have varying um, degrees of pricing in that neighborhood. So you may have some smaller, maybe like patio homes and then on up to maybe more larger homes. Um, so it may be that you're trying to filter out if there's not another way that you can filter those sections out in a the neighborhood, then property value may be a way that you could do that. Again, if you click on property value or any of these layers on the map, you can also see very easily in the neighborhood what the value is of the neighborhood. So if you can see here, you can see the different values according to these price ranges here. Again, another filter is home equity. Um, that sometimes may be a little hard to use if you're not quite sure of the value in that particular neighborhood. Ownership time is one of the popular filters that I always like to teach in my classes. Um, just so we, if you know, you know, most of the time on average, most people move every eight to 10 years or so. So if you keep that kind of rule and thumb, rule of thumb in mind, then that could be one of the filters that you're using thinking, okay, this person's been there for about 10 years. Maybe they're considering looking for another property to move to. So that's one of the ways you can use ownership time. Again, it could be an example of a neighborhood. Maybe it's a first time home buyer neighborhood. And you know, once most people live there, they live there maybe for about five years and then that's the average time they stay. Um, then again, you could start 
doing some prospecting for those people in that neighborhood that they're getting, they're coming up on that five-year mark, or maybe they're just past it, um, that you could reach out to to see if maybe they would like to move up in a different property. So ownership time. So very, very, very popular is our Remind sales score. So this basically um, puts an estimate on properties. It takes in consideration of public record information along with MLS data, and it puts together an estimate on properties of how likely that property would be to sell within the next six months to a year's time frame. So it's ranged from low, medium to high. So the sales score I find is very helpful, especially if you're doing a search, a prospecting search, and you have thousands of results, and you're just trying to figure out a way to narrow those down to a more manageable list. The sales score usually will do that for you. At least it will get it down to a list that you feel like you can manage. So if you're just unsure on how to get those, the number of results down, um, sales score would be it. That would be my suggestion. So in this neighborhood, if we're looking at the sales score, you see there are two properties listed here that is under the high sell score. So again, I could always filter those um, property if you're always, if you just wanna curious to see what kind of sell scores are on a particular neighborhood, then again, you could do just like I'm doing here. Absentee owner filter is another popular filter. So this filter is especially popular if you're doing an invest investors prospecting. So again, so here we are in this crazy market. Some investors are starting to decide on some of the properties that they've owned for a while that they've been renting out. Maybe they have just decided that they want to let go of some of those properties. They feel like they can make pretty good money off of those because they bought them several years ago. And they see how much properties are going for in the area. So this is a good way to prospect for listings um, to try to target those investors. So again, most of the time we think of investors, they're not gonna be living in that property. So they're gonna be absentee owners, either in-state or out-of-state, either one. And that is one way that you could target the investors and the investment property that they own as far as doing prospecting. So if we just take a glance in this neighborhood, you see it looks like that there are a few properties here that probably more than likely is being rented. So absentee owners are on these properties here. So scrolling on down, you'll see a various amount of other filters, building type, um, land use, that's especially helpful if you're looking for commercial land. If, um, if you're especially looking for someone who's looking to put in some sort of business, maybe to filter those land types out that cater to whatever type of business that they are wanting to do. Um, again, mortgage rate filter, that's a good filter as well. So this, basically this filter, let me scroll back in. Sorry about that. Let me scroll back into the neighborhood right quick. So uh, mortgage rate filter, again, this is going to filter out what basically rate, mortgage rate the properties have in this particular area. So you see most of them, most of them here, if we're looking at this particular neighborhood, most of them actually have kind of an average rate. It looks like maybe three to four and a half percent. There's a few there though, 6%, a couple of 6% and higher there. So the way that this is a popular filter is especially since interest rates are still, are still great, you could, target those folks who have a higher interest rate to see if possibly they would be interested in selling their house. Um, you know, maybe they would consider doing a refinance. So this is where you could 
partner with a mortgage broker or lender that you partner with on certain things, then maybe you do some prospecting for these higher interest rates and the property owners and see if maybe, you know, possibly could become a refinance, could become possibly a sale for you and um, the use of the mortgage broker or lender for them to obtain a mortgage on their new property. So a couple of different ways that you could use that, especially um, for prospecting these days for listings. So again, and the last popular filter that I'm going to point out is the distressed deal. So anyone who's looking for any properties that may be in notice of default or going into a foreclosure sale, this is a great way of just searching for those properties here as well. So hopefully that helped as far as what the filters are, um, how that will help you as far as prospecting. So um, thanks again for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.